Which cancer results in the most life lost? You might be surprised to learn the answer. It's glioblastoma multiform, a type of brain cancer that begins in the glial cells known as astrocytes. This is a truly grim disease. A disease whose prognosis is poor, whose side effects are debilitating, and whose treatment is treading on impossible. Five-year survival rates are astounding. 17% for ages 20 to 44, 6% for ages 45 to 54, and 4% for ages 55 to 64. The reason for such low survival rates is that glioblastoma is incredibly difficult to treat. Although the cancer tends to originate in astrocytes, it expands into various other types of brain cells, and then these separate cell types react differently to the different treatment therapies. On top of that, surgery is gratuitously difficult. First of all, it's brain surgery. And secondly, these tumors are not compact. They have finger-like tentacles that make removing the entire tumor difficult and unintended brain damage more likely. There is no screening for this cancer. And besides genetics and ionizing radiation, which are risk factors for all cancers, there are no known causes. Therefore, it is of utmost importance to focus on glioblastoma's prevention. SSRI stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. These prescribed drugs are meant to work as antidepressants by increasing the amount of a neurotransmitter called serotonin in the brain. However, little is known about the mechanism by which SSRIs reduce depression. Little is understood about the exact functions of serotonin in the brain, and little is known about the side effects of prolonged excessive brain serotonin levels. Despite this, SSRIs are extremely prevalent nowadays, and their use has skyrocketed within the last decade by 400%. Now one out of every 10 Americans over the age of 12 years is taking SSRIs regularly. Almost 75% of these people taking antidepressants actually lack depressive symptoms. My proposed study will be a case control study with single stage cluster sampling. It will explore the hypothesis that use of antidepressants, specifically SSRIs, will increase the likelihood of developing glioblastoma. Serotonin increases the amount of glia cell-derived neurotrophic factor and nerve growth factor produced by astrocytes. With excessive serotonin availability, a persistent increase in growth factors could result in too much cell growth and formation of glial tumors. Cases will be incident glioblastoma diagnoses from four large Kaiser Permanente hospitals in California. The Kaiser system is unique in that its medical care and pharmaceutical dispensaries are contained within a closed circuit. This will allow us access to accurate history and dosage information for SSRI users. For each case, there will be two controls. One control will be from the same hospital, a healthy patient coming into the family physician for an annual checkup. The other control will be a friend or neighbor of the case. Both will be matched on age, sex, and zip code. We are hoping to recruit at least 600 participants, and the cost of the study will land at around $325,000. A conditional logistic regression will be done to estimate adjusted odds ratio. In addition to the matching variables, analysis will take into account confounders including duration of SSRI exposure, dosage, presence of allergies, exposure to ionizing radiation, family history, and genetic predispositions. We will also be looking at the interaction between SSRIs and a polymorphism affecting serotonin receptor transportation. Finding evidence that SSRIs increase risk of glioblastoma would result in drastic regulation on access to SSRIs. Furthermore, this would support research into alternative treatments for depression and influence more people to try psychotherapy before turning to medication.